Welcome back to Figure Depot. Today we're taking a look at the McFarlane DC Multiverse Robin Tim Drake, Robin Reborn. I'm uh, very excited for this figure. Can't wait to get it open and check it out. I do have the Amazon exclusive. We'll take a look at that Tim Drake Robin, get a comparison, and I'll show you some options to replace this extremely oversized bow staff that he comes with and uh, prevent his hands from warping. And it looks much better, but uh, we'll get a look at that here in a minute. And let's get this guy open to see what's inside. Here's your barcode real fast. Ooh la la! We of course get our trading card and circular display base. We get our bow staff. We get our Robin ring. And we get Robin. So one thing I'll point out right out of the package, a lot of these have issues with the paint being chipped off in different places around the capes. I'm gonna touch that up real quick on camera. All right, while Robin's paint is drying, we'll take a closer look at the Batarang. Uh, really nice detail here on the Batarang. Looks really good. Just a simple sculpt and just molded in black there, but very effective, simple good size. What is not a good size is this massive bow staff. Now the height of it is fine, but the girth of it is just insane. It's just like a muffler or something. In a real world scale, this is probably about a five inch diameter and a bow staff would probably be closer to like two and a half or three. So I'd like to show you some accessory swap options that are going to be more practical for this figure. With Mattel's last outing with the DC Multiverse license, we had the Red Robin figure here, and he came with a bow staff that is actually the perfect size. You can see the difference here. That looks so much more accurate to what it should in terms of the diameter of that beast. Also another good option, if you have the Marvel Legends Gambit figure, very similar design. It's segmented, just like the one that McFarlane gave us, but it again is a more sane diameter. So we'll get a look at him holding it. I'm not even going to have Robin hold this because it's going to warp his hands. From the factory, they're the perfect uh, diameter there for one of these staffs. If I were to put this in his hands, it would warp them. Then I'd have to heat them up, reshape them, and then cool them again. So we're not going to go through all that. All right, here you can see we have a much better option. That looks a lot more the scale it should be. And it's very similar in design to the one that they gave us. Theirs was just way oversized. So that's a really great fit there. And we'll go ahead and just compare these two while we're here. But we'll do a comparison with many other figures towards the end of the video. So looking at the first release, we knew, hey, why does he have sleeveless arms, but they're painted red? We knew this was coming. Also, the dead giveaway was the oval behind the circular R in the sculpt, which of course was gonna be that. So we knew it was coming. I went ahead and got this figure because I do prefer this head sculpt over the one that we got here. I do not like that other head sculpt at all. Um, I don't know, just something about it that's funky. And when you put this one on him, which I'll do here in just a second, you really get an idea. It's very much a blend of the Batman the Animated Series Robin, which of course was Dick Grayson in the Tim Drake costume. And also, I just think this head looks a lot more like Tim Drake than this particular one does. Kind of what at least my vision of Tim Drake is. 
from the comics as well. So I'll be doing a head swap and just keeping this head on that figure going forward. And I'll put this one on him and then paint the mask back black. And I don't think I'm gonna paint this one green. I think I actually like having the mask black, the cape black, and the boots black. And then just letting the green come from the rest of the costume. If you're picking this guy up in store, one thing that you wanna pay attention to is the legs here. Sometimes the way they're packaged, they've got this part of his trunks pinched behind the leg, and that's going to be a constant point of aggravation with it tucking under as you're manipulating the figure's legs. Fortunately, the one that I was sent does not have that issue. It was packaged well, and everything tucks just like it's supposed to, so very grateful for that. But that's just something to look out for if you're picking one up in person versus ordering online. Looking at the figure up close, this is a really awesome sculpt. I do like it a lot. The texture on the sleeves and the gauntlets is really nice. And it just looks really good all around. There is a subtle texturing in the pants as well. It doesn't pop out quite like the other, but it is there, so that's nice. Love that we get the tabby, the ninja shoes, ninja boots. And McFarlane's kind of added some extra detail to those, but it doesn't look bad. You know, it, it all fits with the design of the character, in my opinion. So, pretty cool. Uh, just to get a closer look at that texture on the pants here. There is some subtle texturing in the trunks as well. Then of course we get all the plating and stuff. I do like the belt. It does dip, not quite as deep as I think it should, but it's definitely not straight across. So uh, kudos for them paying attention to that. We do get the armor plating up here. The R looks good. Of course, you know from the comics that R was larger than the oval. The oval would have been smaller behind it, um, but that would have, been a challenge to get with all these you know plates and the armor so obviously they expanded the oval and shrunk the R down to kind of fit with the design motif that they were going for and I'm okay with it I think it looks good and uh, I'm fine with it for what it is we do get the classic padding on the shoulders and the gauntlets so true to the comic book there looks really good it almost looks leather the under Part of the glove under the padding that's overlaid it has a real nice texture to it that's cool uh, real nice sculpt work on the hands there the head sculpt you know a lot of people either love it or hate it it is very polarizing so um, I mean I don't just despise it it's just not not what I would have done not what I would have gone with you know which is fine because you can do a little head swap and you're good to go do like the sculpt of the hair it is very nice cool design uh, so I did have to touch up paint the back and I accidentally used a satin finish paint instead of matte so I'm gonna have to go re retouch it but anyway uh, looking at the leather here it definitely looks awesome really great sculpt there I'd never envisioned his cape being leather, but I definitely like it, especially with the armored up look for the rest of the figure. Having that leather cape is, fits it in terms of design. We get the yellow under cape, which is cool, of course, and then we get padding and plating on the back, which is consistent with the rest of the armor design. So really, really nice overall design of this figure is really really good and he looks good with other McFarlane figures in my collection and also the scale I know people have issues with the scale and certainly he should be smaller but I kind of have some of the higher end scale figures in my collection so he actually is going to fit in pretty well and we'll look at that here in a little bit all right let's go ahead and run down the articulation so head will look up nice and high he won't look down just a whole lot. 
Of course, he will swivel 360, no problem. The arms go out 90, which is perfect. That's what we want. We do have the swivel at the biceps. Double jointed elbows, which the lower joint is a little harder to move. It's a little tighter. This up here is good and loose. We do get our ball hinges that are sculpted here, so you can get any kind of up and down, side to side movement you want out of that by manipulating them. Uh, upper torso crunch. So that's as good as you're gonna look down. They really gotta work on their forward crunch on these figures. I don't know why the why that's a challenge for them. Going back never seems to be an issue. Uh, side is really good. Side to side is really, really good, actually. It's just that forward crunch that is an issue. You do, of course, rotate 360 at the upper and lower ball joint, no problem. Uh, we do get a split out to the side and then we get a forward kick 90 degrees and it goes back very well we get our double jointed knees and then we get a really good ankle pivot we get toes that point or ankles that point down and up and then we get our toe articulation uh, and then of course this joint swivels so absolutely stupendous articulation in the legs and the upper body's good we just needed that uh we really needed that forward crunch to be better all right here is robin with year two batman and with the uh criminal joke no comedian joker sorry uh these are definitely scaled well together here. This Joker is a bit short, though, with the Robin, because Joker is a taller character. This Batman is, I think, the largest Batman that we have in McFarlane's line. That Three Jokers buck is definitely beefy and tall. So, you know, it does make Joker seem a little bit undersized. But I still think, you know, you can make it work. And, you know, Joker basically is the exact same height as Robin, just a hair taller, just a hair taller. But he should be significantly more so. Here he is with Batgirl and Nightfall Catwoman. So I think those are fine. They should all be around the same height, and you can see that they are. Uh, Tim Drake. This is going to be an older Tim Drake, obviously, because of how tall he is. And um, he would be around the same height as Batgirl and Catwoman. So I'm good with the scale there. Here's another comparison that I think people will want to pay attention to. Uh, Tim Drake is a little shorter, I think, in my opinion, than certainly Dick Grayson should be. And you can see that the Dick Grayson, this Nightwing here, is definitely a little taller, so that's good. Some would argue not tall enough, but it's definitely taller, so it fits, again, if you consider him to be a little bit older. It's kind of like he went and became Red Robin and then decided to go back and just be Robin again. So that makes sense in my mind, <laughs> anyway, for me to be happy. And uh, Jason Todd is taller I feel like that is accurate as well for some big figure comparisons uh, my go-to killer croc is the Mattel DC multiverse collect and connect croc I love the sculpt on this I love the color scheme on this I like that kind of bluer green as opposed to what we're getting from McFarland so uh, that's my go-to killer croc and then of course the mega fig Bane is in my opinion, the best Bane we've gotten. I did have the DC Universe Classics. I sold it uh, earlier this year, actually, because I kind of settled in on this larger one. I think with that seven inch scale, uh, McFarlane figures, I needed a bigger Bane 
than what I got with the DC Universe Classics. I mean, it's just gonna depend on your taste. For some people, they want a smaller Bane, but I like just a big, hulked out, crazy looking Bane, so I ended up settling on the McFarlane. For some other DC comparisons, here is the Page Puncher's head on the Hush Superman, and I really like that head sculpt much better than the one that we just got. And then the Injustice Flash, uh, really like that figure a lot. It's kind of a jacked, beefy version <laughs> of the CW Flash, and I just love it. But uh, yeah, he is shorter than these guys, which he should be. Superman should be a hair taller, but um, take what I can get with that. Here's my Harvey Bullock, also Sam from McFarlane from the Spawn comics, but makes a great Harvey Bullock until we actually get one. And then of course we've got Gordon here from DC Direct. He's just kind of the perfect classic looking Gordon. He is difficult to pose for action shots, but if you just need a stoic Jim Gordon standing in the shadows with Batman, he makes a really nice one. And for some more quick Mattel comparisons, we have the Batman Returns Danny DeVito Penguin which was, I think, too big for that line, but actually works really well in this 7-inch McFarlane line. He scales perfectly, so glad we got that figure. And then we have, of course, Alfred over here, so I like all those. For a couple more quick looks at some villains, we have the Clown Joker from Three Jokers, and of course we've got our Mr. Freeze, which this is a beautiful figure, really well done. And just because, here he is with the Mattel. I can't remember what series Hulk Hogan this is, but it's one of the elites in kind of his plain clothes look. And then of course we have their new Ultimate Hulk Hogan figure and it's very 80s <laughs> and they're of course bigger than he is as they should be and there is the head swap as promised that looks fantastic really like the black I think it coordinates perfectly and that is just a good looking Robin figure you get Tim Drake vibes, you get Dick Grayson from Batman the Animated Series vibes. It's just a beautiful blend of both, and I could not be happier. This head swap just completes the look for me. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you prefer the one that came with this figure, or do you like doing the swap here? There you have it, folks. My definitive Robin. This is awesome. This is the Robin I've been waiting for for the last, what, three years, four years? McFarlane's been doing this. So, glad to finally have this masterpiece here. The sculpting is really good. The only thing that I'm not wild about with the sculpting is, of course, going to be the knee joints. They're just real chunky and blocky and spiky. They did such a good job with the Batman year two, his knees were awesome looking. I don't know why they kind of took a step back and went to this more chunky look. Uh, let's get a let's get a little look at that. So here we have a Batman knee from year two. When it's bent, it still has the same profile. So I don't know why we got away from that and went backwards to this but you know that'd be my one nitpick for this figure is that sculpt work they gotta go back to that softer look on the knees I think all right so here's a look at my McFarlane bat family I don't have I mean I do have a Damian Wayne but I'm just not a big Damian Wayne fan so I went ahead and stuck my Damian Wayne head on this Carrie Kelly Robin and kind of made my own little Robin. So I guess you can throw him in there if you want all of them there. But I definitely prefer uh, the rest of these guys. Damian Wayne, I don't know, he's just not my, not my favorite character. I uh, do 
like Talia Al Ghul and Bruce together, uh, but I also like Bruce and Selena together, so it's kind of a <laughs> toss up there for me. But I love the way all these scale together. Uh, Batman is tall enough to be taller than Tim Drake. Tim Drake is shorter than Dick Grayson. Alfred's an old man. You got Batgirl over here and Red Hood, Jason Todd. So all of these scale, in my mind, right kind of where they should be. If you consider that Tim Drake would be a little older. And then, of course, having Damian Wayne in here as Batman's son, you know, all of that works. So... What are your thoughts on this figure? I think it's fantastic. I think it's a wonderful addition to the McFarlane Batman family and the Batman line. Uh, tell me if you like the Red Robin better that we looked at earlier. Some people seem to prefer it, but to me with the Batman, the animated series being one of my favorite animated series of all time, and then Tim Drake being my favorite Robin, I, this is just a, a given for me to be a good Batman and of course you got to have the head swap I definitely prefer the red Robin head on the Robin reborn buck so thanks for watching guys I'll see you next time figure depot out oh be sure you check out my Instagram I'm gonna be doing a lot more figure photography here coming up so just keep an eye on that thanks for watching